Now let's turn attention to Asia, where the Bangladesh Police Service Association says it is declaring a strike until the security of every member of the police force is assured. In a statement, the Police Service Association, which represents thousands of police officers across the country, says more than 440 police stations were attacked on Monday following the forced resignation of former of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. A number of police officers were reportedly killed during the protests. The country's parliament has now been dissolved, and the Army Chief General Wakaru Zaman has said in a national address that the military would form an interim government. But that suggestion has been fiercely opposed by the youth who want uh, Nobel laureate uh, to lead. On Monday, the 76-year-old Bangladeshi leader, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, resigned and fled the country by helicopter following weeks of deadly anti-government unrest. Youngster of the country, in a protest dubbed the Gen Z Revolution, said they can no longer tolerate her authoritarian leadership that has spanned through decades. Sheikh Hasina's exit ends 15 years in power that the people of Bangladesh say was marked by the stifling of civil rights and heavy-handed use of security forces to crush dissent and their critics. Well, let's now get more on the situation in Bangladesh. And joining us is the national editor, Greater Kashmir, Surinder Oberio. He joins us from Delhi in India. Good to have you join us, Mr. Oberoi. Well, let me begin by asking you to describe, you. yes, uh, could you describe to us the situation in India following the arrival of Sheikh Hasina, you know, who is seeking safety there away from protesters in her home country of Bangladesh? Yes, uh, she landed here and today the Minister of External Affairs in the Parliament gave a complete picture that it was a short notice given to the government that the plane is going to land in Delhi and there, I mean, uh, the India has welcomed her arrival. But however, it's believed that she's not going to stay here for a long time. She has been shifted from the military uh, airport, which is, uh, uh, I'm not very far away from the public airport also, uh, under security in a safe house and uh, she continues to do negotiations most probably with the United Kingdom, with Britain. But uh, reports are again pouring in that asylum after traveling to Britain is not permitted. So UK Home Office needs uh, them, uh, especially Sheikh Hasina and her sister who both are here, that they need to apply beforehand. And most prob probably the process has begun. Meanwhile, there was a concern in India. The concern, major concern is that Bangladesh is a friend of India. And uh, Sheikh Hasina has been very cordial uh, relations with the Prime Minister of India. Also, we share 4,000 plus kilometer of border with Bangladesh. And the language, culture with the Bengalis of India is quite common. You find huge number of Bangladeshis here, as well as around 19,000 Indians were also uh, there. Many of the Indian students also go for the medical classes and others in uh, Bangladesh. So the main concern is that as now the Awami League, the one which was ruling the government, is now facing the brunt. I would say the uh, maximum protesters are burning their houses, homes, or hotels, uh, and several deaths have taken place even yesterday also. Okay. Uh, now, uh, these people should not cross over or come as refugees to India. Mm. And that is the precaution which India wants to take. And secondly, India doesn't want to interfere in Bangladesh. We had uh, worked with all the different governments which have been there in Bangladesh. So what India would like to see is the progress as well as a good relation with the neighborhood. And uh, of course, if required, I'm sure for the next security, India would be always there to support them, which they have been doing it since 1971, when the first revolution took place in Bangladesh. All right. A lot is going on presently in uh, Bangladesh, and it's just unclear, you know, where it is all headed. Because now parliament has been dissolved. 
the police is going on strike and the country's military chief is holding talks with political leaders and protest organizers. As a matter of fact, we're beginning to hear that an interim government might be set up. What is next? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, there are uh, the quite a number of reports, especially uh, there is a demand by the students' organizations who were, in fact, uh, right now, as you and I speak right now, the student organization leaders are in the president's uh, home right now in Bangladesh, in Dhaka, where they are negotiating about the entering government. And meanwhile, the army changes have also taken place. The top army chief has not been changed, but as the question of interim government, civilian government, which they have insisted should be there, of course, military just wants to give the security. And that's what the army chief has also said that as and when the situation returns, uh, and the president has also said that it will be a civilian government and interim government. And in between, the opposition leader of BNP, that is Bangladesh National Party, who has remained as a former uh, prime minister also and is rival of Asina. She was in jail for the last 16, 17 years. She has been released also today. So lots of things are happening, as you rightly said right now. Uh, changes in the military within 24 hours of her leaving the country. Uh, what exactly that clearly means that they are removing the people who were loyal or faithful to Hasina and are substituting the people who were in opposition. And you know, this uh, thing was visible since January when the elections took place. Because the elections were also not seen as free and fair. Even though for India, the Sina government has been very uh, uh, good as far as the relations are concerned and uh, bilateral dealings of trades were concerned. But right. there, the public, when you talk to the public of Bangladesh, they were not happy. They were feeling a little choke in the circumstances which were being done. All right, Mr. Oberoi, earlier you mentioned about one of the concerns in India, which is for these protesters in Bangladesh not to cross over into India. You've spoken about the cordial relationship that India shares with Bangladesh and, you know, the need to maintain that. But how do you think India can step in, considering the severity of what is going on in Bangladesh at the moment? See, India has got a lot of uh, their diplomatic uh, people present in Dhaka as well as in other states. There are several uh, sub-embassies, I would say, councils which are spread out there. And the visits between Bangladesh and India are huge. In fact, there's a huge number of refugees, Bangladesh refugees also will live in India. Uh, some legal and some illegal. They are doing businesses also here. Now, India's biggest worry is that Radicalization should not seep in. Why? Because Jamaat e Islami is the supporter of the PNP. And if you look into the past when they were ruling in 2004 and 2005, several of the separatist groups used to smuggle guns and uh, bombs to India for the uh, uh, Muslim separatist issues as well as Northeast militant things. So that is the biggest worry. For India, whosoever is going to rule Bangladesh, that's their internal matter which is not to be intervened. But I'm sure any government which comes to the Bangladesh would surely try to maintain a very good relation, even if they ideologically will be different. And India would also like to see that there should not be the growth of, uh, too much growth of China's foothold in Bangladesh. And that is another scare internationally, if you look into it, that they may also try to enter into that area. Right. The third thing is Pakistan's interference can also be there because Jamaat Islami was the one who opposed the Bangladesh uh, creation. They were that time, you remember it was East Pakistan before 1971. So they were supporters of them also. So right. these are all political things which needs to be changed and looked into. And definitely there's a concern and India is massively monitoring the situation. Mm, all right, then. Uh, journalist and national editor of the Greater Kashmir, Serena Oberio, thank you so much for talking to us on World Now. Thank you very much for having me. All right. You're watching World Now. When we return, we'll tell you more about what's happening in the Middle East.